In this video, we're going to talk about input fields and some of the things that you can do with them. You know, what happens from time to time is a viewer or one of my clients will reach out to me with a question about a particular feature in Adobe Captivate and I'll realize, hey, I haven't made that video yet. And that's what today is. So today I've realized I've not done a video about input fields and some of the things that you can do with them and how you can customize them. So that's what we're going to tackle today. Okay, so I just have a couple of basic slides here. This one has essentially an image component and I'm going to add a text input field just below it here. So let's go ahead and we'll click on the add interactive components icon here and we'll select input field. Now this creates a block with a label and an input field and optionally you can add a button which I'm going to do in this case here. You could add multiple buttons up to three in this case. And we can also add a card if we want to isolate it from the background. I'm just going to stick with a single button right now. And I'm going to do a few things to customize this. First of all, I'd like to point out that you have the opportunity to select a bunch of different design options for the block itself. So I could choose this option. I could choose this option, this option, whatever you like. I'm going to stick with the default one because it's the most neutral, I think. And uh, I want to point out too that if I click on the input field itself, there are separate design options for that as well. So we can do things like choose a larger input field or have the input field blend into the background, give it more rounded corners, things like that. So those options are available to you as well. Let's select the block itself. And I'm just going to hover over my label. We're going to center that and we're going to do the same thing for the button here. I'm going to label this button start and the label we will call customer service. Now what we're asking students to do is input their name in this field here. So one of the nice things about input fields is that you can edit the default text that appears in the input field itself. And I'm going to do that here. I'm going to select enter in your name and press start to begin the course. Now with that input field selected, I'd like to point out that there are multi states available in input fields because they are interactive. We want to give our students a visual cue as to what's happening with that input field right now. So let's click the show button here and this opens a states panel which you can see here on my screen. The normal state is when no one's interacting with that particular input field at this moment. So if there's no mouse on it, if you haven't tabbed to it, if you haven't clicked on it, it's going to appear normal. And with that selected, I can make changes to the appearance here. So for example, I could change the shape of the input field for I could select a color for that background to appear. If I wish, I'm going to leave it white for our purposes here, but that's something you could do. And we can also change the border. Now the border can be however style that you wish. You could have dotted lines. You could increase the thickness of the border if you wish. You can just see it, make it out there. You can even add a drop shadow to it as well if you like. Again, I like to keep things pretty standard, so I'm going to stick with just a standard border and we'll just make it two pixels wide. I can change the size of the input field. I can make it small, medium, or large. But one thing to remember is that you can change the text within the input field as well. So I'm going to choose a different font here and I can choose the size for desktop, tablet, or mobile as well. So I have quite a bit of control here. Some of the things that you could use an input field for, you can use it as a knowledge check where you ask your student a question, they give you an answer, 
and you can give them feedback accordingly. So there are states related to this as well. So when I click on an input field, I can change how it appears. So we're changing the border to be this blue color here. There is a state for disabled. So for example, if there was something the student needed to do first and you didn't want them to start interacting with this input field, you could disable the input field. And to allow it to show the disabled state, you would need to enable that state. Let's click on that and see what that looks like. And again, you can change the appearance of this state. But for now, I'm going to disable the disabled state. I know that's kind of funny there. When you tab away or click on another object, you can show this field as success. The focus has been lost in success and you can change the appearance of that, including the background, the border color and things like that, just to denote that maybe they've typed in a correct answer and incorrect would be this failure caption here. And you can see they've added a red border around it to let your student know what you typed in wasn't correct. If you don't need such states, you can disable both of those and they won't affect the normal usage of your input field. Another thing you can do with input fields is you can ask students to provide information that might be useful for you to personalize an e-learning course. So for example, I could ask students as I've done here to enter in their name and press start to begin the course. Now with every input field, there is a user variable that gets generated by default. This is not very meaningful. Variable edit box string underscore five doesn't tell me that that is going to be the student's name. So one piece of advice I will give you is to create a variable for student name. And you can go into the window dropdown and select variables here. If I click the plus icon, I'm creating a new variable. And I like to format my variables with an underscore at the beginning here and we'll just type in student underscore name. I'll make sure to change that to a string variable, which is any variable that contains numbers and letters and characters and so on. So we'll type that in. There's no default value in this case. I could put a description of this. Here is where we store the student's name. Okay, we'll click Create there. I'll click outside this. Now, sometimes it takes a moment before that variable becomes available. I'll just click outside of my input field and select it again, and it should be there by now, and it is. So I'll just select a student name. And what's useful is with my Start button here, we can simply go to the next slide. And on the next slide, we can type in something that personalizes this training. We can say, welcome, dollar sign, dollar sign, which tells Captivate I'd like to use one of the variables in the system. In this case here, we're gonna say student name and maybe follow that up with a comma there. Let's go back up to slide number one here. Now, if one of the things you wanted to do was to make filling in this field mandatory, what we can do is create an on enter action by clicking on the plus icon and going to slide enter. And the first thing we will do is we will disable our start button so they can't move forward. Click next and then done. Let's select the input field here. And for valid input entered, we can enable that start button and press next. Let's make sure our start button has a disabled state available. So we will enable that. And I'm gonna disable the selected state because I don't really need it in this case here. Let's test this out and see how it works. All right, so I haven't entered anything and you'll see the start button is disabled, but I can type in my name and we can press start and it moves on to this slide here and welcomes me with that personalized message because I've stored that information in a variable. And now throughout the course, I can say, welcome Paul Wilson or congratulations, Paul Wilson, whatever might be appropriate. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. 
If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.